guys, welcome back to the Fanny Loom. I'm Felicia from Sweet Georgia. Today we're going to talk about weaving. We're going to talk about the difference between reading about things versus actually doing things and if it actually makes a difference. I think it does. <laughs> So welcome back. We are sitting here at the Fanny Loom where I have been working on overshot samples for a couple of months now. Now I have, you guys have been asking on Instagram about what the actual weaving draft is that I've been using and it's actually from Marguerite Porter Davison's book. It's called J.S. or Johann Schlielen. One, two, three. So it's in Marguerite um, Porter Davidson's book, but it's also reprinted in Sharon Alderman's book called Mastering Weave Structures. And so I just used the weaving draft straight out of there, threaded my loom, and then started weaving these samples. Because for me at the time, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to work through this book and I wanted to work through the variations and I want to understand how does it work? How do you treadle? star fashion? How do you treadle rose fashion? How do you treadle on opposites? How does this um, flame point work? I'm trying to figure out the flame point right now and see how that works. It's a little bit more confusing than it seems. And so it's one thing to like go through and read all of these books and I can logically say, oh yeah, of course, I know how that works. I can understand how overshot works when I read these books. But when you actually sit down and do it and physically lay those weft picks into the shed and change shuttles and that entire physical feeling of doing it makes a huge difference. So I encourage you, if you've never tried overshot before, maybe just, you know, they, they have a threading in here. The threading in here is called Star of Bethlehem this one here, and just thread that and start trying some of these different variations to see how they all work. But after that, <laughs> there's more. So one of the things that we have been talking about is doing this OHS or the Ontario Hand Weavers and Spinners Weaving Certificate Program. I'm kind of doing these two things at the same time. Doing the GCW Master Weaver Certificate, that's like the test of testing that you know how to do all these things. And then doing the OHS uh, weaving units because that's kind of like working through exercises and assignments to learn this stuff for the first time. And so unit number five is about blocks and that's where the overshot stuff is. And so the overshot samples require you to do a bunch of different variations. So you have to weave uh, star fashion, rose fashion on opposites. I think there's one petite point. There's swivel, all of these different variations that I'm trying to learn how to do. But one of the requirements for that OHS uh, Unit 5 assignment is that you design your own threading for your overshot. And so here I have just threaded it with something that I got out of a book. It was almost like a recipe. I'll just follow these things and then make this thing and ta-da, I have overshot. Um, and so I was telling Rachel, you know, Rachel Smith from Welford Pearls and then telling her and a bunch of other weavers that, Hey, um, I feel like I know what I'm doing now with overshot and but I don't need to <laughs> design my own threading. <laughs> and I think it was, uh, Rachel who was like, well, do you think that maybe some things could be learned through the process of designing your own threading? <laughs> and yes, it's true. It's much harder than you think. So what I wanted to do is I have a significant amount of warp still left on this loom. And so rather than continuing on with the draft that's already been threaded in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these samples and then I have put some leaf sticks back in the back to separate out sort of um, my warp ends to make them sort of like a tabby shed again. So I've put the leaf sticks in the back now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off at the front and then re-thread this entire loom using a threading that I have designed myself. And you can see I've put it up here. It was much more difficult to do than I realized. There's a lot of considerations that I had to make. I have 130 ends on here right now. I wanted to work within those 130 ends. I threaded five different repeats of that pattern that I found in the book. And so they're not entirely symmetrical. One side feels like it needs a little bit something. Uh, so what I did with my own threading draft is that I created a few little borders on the edges. I've seen some of these overshot borders that are just like twill little ripples. So I put those 
on the sides, and then I made four threading units in the middle so that they're perfectly symmetrical. And I don't know what it's gonna look like, really. I mean, I have an idea using the drawdown from the software that I'm using, but what it will actually look like on the loom, I'm actually very curious to see. So this is the next thing. I'm currently just figuring out this flame point variation, and then after the flame point, then I'll cut it off, re-thread, and start weaving my own overshot that I've designed myself. Now there's a lot of learning that has to go into all of that. So I've printed off all of the stuff that I need for the OHS assignment, but I'm starting to read these things, like all unit weaves are block weaves, but not all block weaves are unit weaves. What does that even mean? It's it's a lot of learning that has to happen sort of behind the scenes of these things. And so I'm also looking at this book here, this Madeline Vanderhoof book, uh, Complete Book of Drafting for Hand Weavers. And so this one is great. There's a lot of stuff about twill in here and things like that. There's also about overshot. So I want to learn how this all works because it's one thing to create the threading, but then in order to figure out, you know, how many picks of which thing you need to make and how many is this block and what is considered a block and all of that kind of stuff. I'm learning out of reading this. This is my bedtime reading right now. And then I also found this book. This is a, I had to get it off of a used book market. Uh, Designing and Drafting for Hand Weavers by Berta Frey. And this one, again, lots of information about different kinds of weave structures. I wanted this book because there's also things to do with M's and O's, Crackle, Summer and Winter. These are all things that I'm wanting to learn this year. And so I had to find this book. Luckily, this book was only something like $15 um, on a used marketplace. You can find some of these used books. They're like hundreds and hundreds of dollars, but luckily this one was not too bad. A lot of the books that we have for weaving and for learning weaving are very old. They're out of print. And so that's one of the places that we have to go to to find these books is just to go to these old book marketplaces. <laughs> I guess you could check with your guild too as well. You could check with your local guild to see if they have some of these books in the library. But this is invaluable. This is where all the knowledge is. This is where you have to go in order to learn this stuff. So it's one thing to read how to design your own draft out of these books, out of these old books, out of these PDFs and things like that. But it's a whole other thing to sit down and try to like tap, tap, tap out your little threading draft in your software and you figure out, is this symmetrical? Does this work? How does it look? All of these kinds of considerations, that whole exercise, is a lot of learning involved in that as well. So I appreciate the nudge <laughs> from my weaving friends to not be so lazy about this whole thing and not just feel like, oh, I know how this all works, but to actually go deeper into it, to do the reading, to write it out, to do it by hand, to figure out all of these things for the threading so that I can design my own draft so that whatever overshot I create next is going to be mine. But so far right now with these samples that are on the loom, I've woven rose fashion, star fashion, I've woven on opposites. I've done these things that are called just blocks from that weaving book by Patty Graver. Um, and I did that with some of the tapestry yarn, the array kind of like interleaving them and fading them together to make a really smooth gradient. So that was really, really fun to do. Um, and then the last thing I did was I put in some of my own hand spun. So that was also really fun to play with just like wool wool hand spun in this cotton warp. And finally, this flame point thing, trying to figure that out. And once I'm done with that, it's on to the next thing. So that is basically it for today. I would love to hear from you what you have been captured by. Like, what have you been doing deep dives into? What have you, you know, really gone deep into studying and learning about? I'm really curious because I am really having a good time learning about all of these different weave structures and learning what else I can do with them. And then from that point on, learning how to design with them. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. If you like this video, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. We come here on Wednesdays to talk about weaving and we come here on Fridays to do our regular Taking Back Friday videos where we talk about everything to do with the fiber arts. So I hope that you'll join us again for something to do with color and craft. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.